This is how you can get rid of negative thoughts by Devan Chakrawal. Alright, so sometimes you must have noticed that a certain negative thought comes into your mind, which is really hard to forget, as it kind of gets stuck in there forever. It keeps on pestering us again and again, which makes us quite uneasy and apprehensive, and we want to get rid of that negative thought as soon as possible. This predicament has two solutions basically, the temporary solution. One is, as soon as the thought comes into your mind, you divert your attention to something else, you know like watch a movie, read a book, or my blog, go out with friends and so on. But these all are temporary solutions to a fairly permanent problem. As soon as you stop doing the particular activity, the thought that is making you uncomfortable it can be related to money, health, relations, career, and so on, would come back again, and you will be back at square one. The permanent solution, well, it's simple, to go to the root cause of that conundrum. That's the best possible way there is out there. But we all know this, still, we are bugged by stress and anxiety. If you can analyze the problem completely, assess the root cause of it, see exactly what the problem is and if you can either leave it or solve it then there is no problem let me give you an example if you are really attached to someone who is very dear to you and you love that person unconditionally and by some chances you two get separated for whatever reasons let's take the worst case scenario and say the person is no more now what will you do in such a situation how will you get rid the negative thoughts then. The thought would always remain there and you won't be able to just forget it all of a sudden. Temporary solutions are always there but like I said they are temporary. In such situations you need to patiently ask yourself who's actually becoming miserable? A simple question but does require some amount of courage from the inside along with an open mind. A different thinking you need a different type of thinking to contemplate this way. A different route from all the clutter everyone is just stuffing in without questioning anything. You don't need to be a blind sheep by just following the crowd. Enough of following the masses. Okay, so once you question yourself, the answer you will most probably get is, but of course me, I am becoming morose. Who the, who the, hell, who the hell else? Who the hell else? Now who is the me here? Are you referring to your body? Is the body becoming morose? Who are you actually? Think. Ask yourself. Can the body be sad? The body can suffer from pain, that's understandable, but can it ever go through depression? Well, the answer is it can be. There isn't any way to make your body depressed. And the fun part is, we all refer to our body as me. We think we are this body. So now who is actually becoming sad when my body is fine? Is it the mind? Okay now sir, some people will come up with the mind. My mind is becoming sad. Can the brain be sad? Try opening one and see exactly where it is becoming sad. What does the mind mean anyway? Memories. To put it simply, without memories, what is left of the mind? You can't think about anything without memories. There can't be any thoughts without memories. There is nothing other than a bunch of thought which can be labelled as a mind. No thoughts would ultimately mean no mind. So thoughts come from memories and how exactly are these memories formed? By recording whatever experiences we go through, right? That's what a memory is. Pretty straightforward, huh? So who's turning sad? Is it the memories? Well, can they really become sad? We should at least know who exactly it is who is becoming sad, otherwise, what's the point? Makes sense, right? I mean, is there even something or someone that's actually becoming sad? Or is it just an illusion? Maybe what I'm, whatever I'm saying makes sense, maybe it doesn't. What I'm basically trying to say is that maybe there actually isn't anything inside you that's becoming sad. So tell me in the comment section, what do you think is actually going on here? Let's take this one step further. What's the closest relationship in this world? Let's take a mother-child relationship, one of the most 
intimate relationships in a general way. The kind of attachment a mother has for a newborn baby supersedes any other kind of attachment. And why is that? Well, because that child is attached to the closest possible way from the body of the mother, or the feeling of I, me and mine. The boyfriend doesn't come out of his girlfriend's body. The husband didn't come out of his girlfriend's body, or the wife's body, I must say. But the baby literally exited out of his mother's body. So for the mother, her baby is just an extension of her. For her, the baby is a part of her. Now just assume hypothetically, the newborn baby couldn't survive for long and the mother is tormented. So again, is it her body from which the baby came that's going through the emotions? It's the mother's feelings related to the child that is causing this, right? But here, the mother is considering her body as hers. We all command a certain sense of ownership on this property that is body. We think we own the body. The obvious question that comes to the mind is that what exactly is there in this body that is actually ours? Keep it simple. What's this body made up of? We eat food, drink water, which in turn makes up our body. 70% of our body is water. This is absolutely scientific. Nothing theoretical or mystical here. So is the water yours? Well, of course not. The water belongs to nature. The food you eat also comes from nature, which is again not yours. 99% of the processes that run your body is involuntary, are out of your control like breathing, digestion, etc. Even your breath, the most significant aspect of keeping the body alive is not in your hands. You don't control heartbeat, you don't control digestion, you don't control your nervous system. So who does it all belong to? Well, like I said, you can call it nature or God. Now the concept of God also has to be made clear here. It's not some super powerful or mystical human sitting somewhere far far away who's controlling all of us like finger puppets. If that were the case, he would have corrected all the problems of this world with a snap of his fingers long back. This pretty much establishes the fact that there is nothing in your body that is actually yours. In fact, if nature stops supporting your body, be it on any level, food, air, digestion, the body will cease to exist. This body is dependent on nature, not the other way around. And nature existed long before the arrivals of the human and will continue to exist long after we have all gone and settled on Mars, all thanks to Elon. Now, if there's nothing in the mother's body that she can call hers, then how does the baby that came out of it belong to her? Think about it. Then this means that all the errors start from this misconception that I am this body. That is not who you are. If you have the courage to put a question mark on this grand illusion, then this can solve an enormous amount of your problems. Or you can always blindly follow the masses. If you can just be, just imagine for once that you are actually in the body instead of being the body, then what's the problem? If you start questioning like this step by step, then slowly and gradually, all your problems will start fading away once and for all. Do you know the biggest sin that one can ever commit in this world? To capture this wonderful tool called the body and misinterpret it as mine which actually belongs to nature, because of which people suffer for all their life. It's bitter, but it's true. So leave this body on the goodwill of nature or God. Let them handle it. Just surrender. Now this doesn't mean you just go and sit and lie down in a forest and go to sleep. Whether this body live or die, it's in his hand. Everything is in his hand. So now what's the fear? This is real devotion. Absolute surrender. Not just for show, but actually from the inside. This can help you get rid of all the negative thoughts once and for all. Or you can always keep on doing what everyone else is doing. Keep assuming you're your body and keep solving problems till eternity. Try keeping your body young forever. Try making your body immortal and let's see how that works out for you. We'll question, who am I? Who am I?
whenever you are sad immediately question yourself who's going through the pain it's not the body but who's attached to the situation that goes through the pain let's peel some layers off if a girlfriend dumps her boyfriend then the boyfriend will feel the pain not the body but he's not just a boyfriend he's a guy first and the guy won't feel the pain the thought that i am this body gets manifested in the center which is not the reality and if it is then prove it fire is hot it burns this is a fact a reality nobody can challenge it but this is not the reality from any angle that i am this body this is nothing but stupidity the body is an awesome instrument through which you see hear speak listen and do another 112 amazing things if you say you are the body then that means until you drink the water you're not the water and the second you drink it the water becomes a part of you the moment you excrete it it becomes waste which has got nothing to do with you really what the hell are we doing consequently now if the body doesn't feel the pain then what about emotions and feelings well let's extend the previous example only so there's a boyfriend who was living with his girlfriend they were together for 4 years and are now separated now what are the emotions who is this boyfriend first of all i'll try to keep it as simple as i can but you got to have patience a person who's a guy thinks he's the body gets connected to another person who's another body for him and has labeled her as a girlfriend and himself as a boyfriend so now the guy became the boyfriend now what is this boyfriend again if hypothetically all the memories of the girl from the very first date up until now are evaporated from the guy's mind then where is the boyfriend now it implies the fact that the boyfriend is actually nothing but the memories of his girlfriend without remembering who her lady was there will be no boyfriend left for the guy so this game of life actually revolves around memories all our thoughts are based on our memories the game of memories so what are emotions now why does our energy pump up sometimes well again memories we call it by different names like love hate etc etc but ultimately it's nothing but memories you will get all excited and start jumping and screaming if you see your favorite actor walking next to you why is that because you have some memories of that particular actor stored in you which triggered positive feelings earlier so now you associate those feelings with the actor likewise if you see your enemy who cheated you and cost you your career then you will become all red and furious because of the memory you have stored in your mind of him kicking you in the gut you will let go of your feelings the moment that memory vaporizes it might sound weird at first but it does make sense if you think about it calmly with an open mind the body that calls himself the boyfriend and the body that calls herself herself the girlfriend are based on the memories they both have stored of each other respectively but the problem is these memories are different for both of them what one felt for another or any situation need not be the exact same for the other partner once these memories become different then clashes and conflicts are inevitable and bound to happen the defect in memory until one of them sees the other person completely detached from his memory exactly the way he or she is the problems will keep increasing we've got two options here one is looking through the memory and the other is what i just told you what we need to understand here is that memories can be deceiving memories are not what the other person really is but our very own interpretations about the other person or any situation which may or may not be accurate these memories get filtered because everyone will interpret them the way they have been brought up you will see the other person the way you have seen things right from your childhood which may be entirely different from reality two bodies can actually never have conflicts with each other all the problems arise when those bodies associate themselves with their memories and who's responsible for that well we are people say they love each other based on the good memories 
they have of the other person. But what happens after marriage? If they can keep up with the good experiences, well and good. But if the number of bad experiences grow exponentially, it ultimately results in a divorce or something worse. Looking at the reality from your memories is not spirituality. Once your basics become strong and you start understanding these fundamentals of life, then ain't no mountain high enough, ain't no valley low enough, and ain't no river wide enough to keep me from getting to you, baby. <laughs> Thanks, Marvin. Once you start seeing things as it is, instead of seeing it from your memories, things become a whole lot simpler. Even real love is not possible through memories. It may be temporarily based on the good experiences you have provided by the other person, but if the same person starts giving you negative experiences, then we will start looking for some, someone else who will help us make some positive memories and the cycle repeats itself. Real happiness. Have you guys ever experienced real happiness? I'll tell you when you're actually happy. The moment you forget yourself. That's when we are actually blissful. Think about it. What's the happiest phase of yours in a day? Easy. Sleeping. So what happens while you're sleeping? You have your body, your breath, digestion and all the processes keep on going. Therefore, what's the one thing that's not there? Thoughts. What there is? Thought. When, when there is thought related to me, no one can ever be truly happy. If you look closer you will notice that in those few moments where we forget who we are, what we want, what we have, what we don't have, how we look, we experience real happiness. Otherwise, you, we keep running behind pleasures all our lives, thinking that would make us happy, but they don't. These pleasures might give us some positive sensations in our body, which leaves us with a desire to experience them again and again. And once we experience it an adequate number of times, we can't want to get rid of it as it shows its true color, but we can't because now we are so badly attached to it. So the pleasure and pain keep on chasing themselves in a never-ending loop. The same pleasure that was giving us temporary satisfaction has now become a permanent pain in the ass. So what's the takeaway from all this? Well, we need to have a place within ourselves where we forget who we are, where there will be no memories related to this body or any other body for that matter, where we will just sit and observe things as it is. The very same atoms that are inside me are inside everyone and everything. We all are connected scientifically and spiritually. It just looks different when viewed from our eyes. Once we let go of the memories, what is it that remains? A very basic nature, peace and happiness. That's a real nature and there's no problem with that. The problem arises when I identify myself with any thought or a body and stick to it. This is the only permanent solution to get rid of negative thoughts once and for all. Well, just to add a, as a side note, I'm not saying memory is bad. It is of supreme importance. The basic point of the whole article is to make you realize the functionality and the purpose of the memory. Once you understand this, no negative thoughts will overwhelm you because thoughts exist because of you. You don't exist because of thoughts. Thank you.